If you were thinking of hitting add to cart, hold that thought. I was gifted this cleansing oil from Peach and Lily, their ginger melt oil cleanser. And I forgot about it, decided to give it a try. I'm sure it's on the expensive side. This brand often is a little pricier, although not like jaw droppingly so. It smells weird. You know how the Dermatology Universal Tint Sunscreen that I love has that kind of pool float odor that's almost endearing at this point and fades quickly after use? Yeah, think of that odor add mixed with maybe a little cooking oil plus just plastic. It's morning right now. I'm about to do my AM skincare routine. I don't do a double cleanse in the morning. I do the double cleanse at night to remove cosmetic residue and all of that stuff. But this morning, just for you guys, I'm going to do a double cleanse with this just so you can see what it looks like because overall it's actually not bad. But if you're going to plunk down the change for a cleansing oil, because there are a lot out there that you have to choose from, you want it to be a pleasant experience. And this is a bit bizarre in terms of the odor. It's definitely a thicker consistency, almost like shampoo. I apologize, I don't know what the ingredients are. It doesn't have added fragrance, or it would seem as though it doesn't have added fragrance. I kind of enjoy the texture, but it doesn't necessarily feel like an oil. It feels more poly like a polymer or something of that sort. Close. I mean, it looks oily on the skin, but it feels, it feels more silicone-y. Now for me at night, I just absolutely adore the oil cleanse step. It's one of my favorite parts of the skincare routine is using a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm, rubbing it all over my face. It's just very relaxing to do before I, I hop in the shower. It does the job as far as removing cosmetics, mascara, water resistant sunscreen. It feels pleasant, but the odor is just bizarre. There's not much of an emulsified lather when you just get it wet. Of course, I'm going to come in with a mild cleanser. I'm just coming in with my Q10 serum. I've tried a handful of their products. You can buy them at like Ulta. And I'm always like, eh, you're okay. But the other brand, Peach Slices, that you can get at the drugstore, like you can get it at CVS. You can also buy it at Walgreens. I love a ton of their, those products. The salicylic acid cleanser is really good. The salicylic acid leave-on moisturizer. Um, their snail toner is really good. And uh, it's just funny because it's the same company, but yeah, I just like the drugstore products better. All right, coming on in with the medium shade today. All in all, that oil cleanser, it's not bad, but like, I don't know, if you're like me and you find the oil cleansing piece of your routine to be something that you look forward to and you kind of like the experience of it, you may not care for the odor on that one. And it's not any better than any other oil cleanser. I mean, they all are kind of the same at the end of the day. I really like the Hadalabo oil cleanser. That's, that's a really good one. Time for coffee. I just put moisturizer on my hands, so they're a little slippery. I've hit pan. Time for a new bag. There goes my iRobot vacuum cleaner. This thing, I've actually had it for a couple of years, but over the past, couple of months I've recently started really using it. I love it. It's kind of like a little pet. It buzzes around. It, it does a really good job. And then it goes back to its little docking station once it's all finished. Like, it's really cool. It's very easy to empty too. <laughs> it just kind of goes all over. It feels like from room to room. I kind of find them a bit endearing. Like a little holy holy. <laughs> he goes doing the rug. Oops, changed his mind. Going back over there. Oh, 
Like, I know the whole point of these vacuum cleaner robots is so that you can do other things and not vacuum. But in all honesty, when it's going around, I end up wasting time just staring at it because I get, like, mesmerized by it. <laughs> Um, yeah, this came from Costco. Uh, I've been really happy with it. It does a really good job. It's easier to empty than like my regular vacuum cleaner. And honestly, it does a better job. I've heard though that the batteries on these don't last that long. I've only recently started using it a lot. Just because I kind of, it's like, oh, I should fire that thing up. Here goes everybody. Over by the workout caddy. I just, Put my tripod there temporarily to give him the most room. <laughs> the other thing I love about him is that he'll go under the bed. My regular vacuum cleaner doesn't fit under the bed, so every time I want to vacuum under my bed, I have to move the bed so I don't end up vacuuming under there as frequently as I would like. But this guy just buzzes under there. Um, and gets it nice and tidy. That's a case for my ring light I shoved under the bed. Um, but see, he just goes under there and gets out all the dust bunnies. While we're in here and I have this odd angle, I wanted to update you guys. I'm still loving this comforter. I have it underneath my decorative comforter, but I got this a few months ago and shared it with you all from Lily Silk. It's really comfy. Um, it's nice and lightweight, and then I have my sheet set there. I mean, look how clean underneath my bed has gotten. I don't know if you can appreciate that, but there probably used to be a ton of dust under there. That really, oh. He comes in here in the closet and does a pretty good job, too. And then once he's done, he just automatically goes right back to his little charging station. It's so cool. It also came with this barrier, virtual wall barrier, if you want to keep him from going in certain areas, but I haven't activated that as of yet. I'm here at the 99 cent only store and unlike Dollar Tree, it seems as though it's still 99 cents. There are a few things that are over 99 cents, but, but they have this cute Easter platter. Looks like an egg. These little tins are good for cookies. Even the 99 cent store has a gnomes. <laughs> They're everywhere. Here the shampoos are $2.99, so more expensive than the Dollar Tree, I think. Um, this looks pretty good. Does it have, this doesn't have those dueling deadly preservatives. I'm overstating it, but they are a common allergen, the isothiazolinones. Um, what is, oh, I love Tresemme. I have the conditioner here and the shampoo, Pro Pure. This one doesn't have those preservatives either. $3.99. Good old VO5, $1.29. That's not a bad deal. I think this has Emma. I think this has the isothiazolinines in it. Yeah. Boo. I, I used to use VO5. Swab's not too bad. Does it have have Emma in it? It does not. Yeah, go with Suave. If you're looking for an inexpensive shampoo, I rather enjoy the rosemary and mint. Not because I think the rosemary helps with my hair growth in a shampoo or anything, but it's pretty good. Lemongrass and ginger. 
Comment below on if you have the 99 cent only store in your area. I know they have them in California, but um, you can find good deals here. Is it just me? This looks like a Snickers bar, like candy, not a vitamin. <laughs> what kind of supplement is this? Caffeine. It's basically caffeinated candy. What is this one? Vanilla, cocoa, goalie bites. You gotta be careful not to take too much vitamin A. It'll dry out your skin, make you, uh, your skin sensitive. What is this one? It says it's a vegan gummy. Hello, Bello. Check this out, an SPF 25 sunscreen by St. Ives. I've never seen this. It does have fragrance. It says for combo or oily acne prone skin. Avabenzone and octinoxate, so might sting around the eyes as an FYI. Um, $2.99, St. Ives. This is a scented moisturizer. This is a knockoff version of the Hemp's, which they have a fragrance-free one, by the way. Hemp's, H-E-M-P-Z. I rather enjoy it. Here's a microfiber hair towel. These are great for getting all the water out. These antibacterial hand soaps, they're not gonna, they're not gonna wash your hand, get your hands any cleaner than a regular hand soap. They're not gonna remove germs any better. CDC doesn't recommend them. All they do is increase the risk of antimicrobial resistant organisms. So I don't recommend those. Little bird feeder. I have a feeling this would attract the squirrels and they would they would take that down and nothing flat. This is a good place to get some weights. They've got kettlebells, they have medicine balls. Look at this full piece workout set with the stretchy bands, yoga mat, and a jump rope. $19.99, that's a pretty good value. Julian Michaels adjustable weights, $19.99. And they have these fitness mats, $9.99. Hip bands. Oh, sports bras, $4.99. That's a good price. I wonder if they're any good. Compression leggings. I'm here in five below. Freeman has a foot lotion with peppermint. Doesn't appear to have anything in it though that would actually help much with callus beyond just shea. Peel off masks, I'm always surprised, are still a thing. Kind of like rubber cement. Licorice root, though, that's helpful for redness. Dutch cacao cream mask. This one is kaolin and bentonite, helpful for oiliness. Oh look, Freeman has a cleansing balm. Five dollars. Coconut oil. Some people find coconut oil aggravates their acne, but otherwise Sounds promising. What's this moisturizer plus skin shield? This also has a licorice root in it. it. Has ceramides, helpful for the moisture barrier. Centella. Doesn't appear to have fragrance in it either. Hmm. Here's a gel cream mask. Anti-pollution. That's largely a marketing gimmick. I mean, maybe antioxidants. Something to keep chelating. Lavender oil fragrance. I'm guessing some of these plant and root extracts are anti-inflammatory. Glacier water replenishes dry skin. I have a nice selection of equipment type things. Free weights, yoga mats, yoga blocks, ankle and wrist weights, balls, Aren't these little Harry Potter stickers cute? They have scented pens. I have to resist the urge to get those. <laughs> Finishing up the last of the Cetaphil Flare Up Relief Cream. Man, I'm gonna have to cut into the tube. But actually, wait a second. I wonder if I can take off the cap. Sometimes if you take off the cap, you can get the residual amount out a lot more easily. 
Nope, that's not gonna come off. Dern. <sighs> then it just shoots out like, it actually, you know what it looks like? It kinda looks like frosting. You know that frosting that comes in a tub? That's what this moisturizer looks like. <laughs> But I would not go tasting it. Let's <laughs> get a little bit on my shirt. Oh man. There we go. So today I filmed a video for y'all. It should be up at this point already about this thing I've been seeing going around TikTok. People using, they claim it's a Korean skincare like holy grail thing. Maybe it really is super popular in Korea. I'm not entirely sure. It's called spicules. Basically, spicules are these little tiny pointy sharp things that make up sponges. <laughs> and they're like pretty sharp. If you look at them through using electron microscopy, they look like this kind of medieval torture device. But basically, the product that people are using it kind of looks like, it reminds me of darts or like some sort of syringe. It's full of this product that you rub on the skin and it has these little spicules in it and it's supposed to like enhance penetration of active ingredients. And I was looking in the literature and it is a technology that, many, that people are trying to work on developing, but the papers that I've come across, they're looking at pig skin models and they take a photograph, they take an electron microscope and they, they go at super duper high power and you can see this little spicule poking through the skin. It kind of gives me the willies seeing that. I don't know why. But my major concern with this trend is like, you know, um, I'm sure the maker of the cream or product or whatever has gone through all these rigorous steps to purify it and everything. These spicules though, they're made of like calcium and silica. And I, I worry that by piercing the skin, you could get the little pieces of silica embedded in your skin and you could develop a foreign body reaction called a silica granuloma. It's pretty rare overall, but it's the kind of thing that happens in people hours to 60 years after they've had like a traumatic introduction of silica into their skin like from a car accident because it's you know like say shards of glass in the skin and so that would be my biggest worry is like what if that could happen um plus i just when i see them doing this and they describe it feeling like those type of cacti that have like the fuzzy little prickles you know what i'm talking about it almost looks like they're wrapped in cotton um they say it feels kind of like that and to me that's just a recipe for irritant dermatitis because cactus spines are no joke you can get a really bad uh, dermatitis to cactus spines and they can get similarly embedded in your skin you can get a foreign body reaction to them and they're often colonized with uh, like fungi and stuff so you can get a little fungal infection in your skin uh, if you get stuck by cactus <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's no, it's no, nothing to play around with, uh, cactus spines, so be careful, but all I have to say, like, I swear, that app, people present themselves, too, as, like, as though some technique or something is just, like, they're an authority on it, and it's, you know, standard practice to be doing this, and I'm just, like, anyway, all I have to say, I am intrigued and slightly terrified of this spicule trend. Let me know in the comments if you've ever tried this product. I think the maker is, um, God, what is it called? Story, Story Derm, Story Derm Princess Peel. But it's basically those little shards of spicules. Yeah. <laughs> Terrified uh, of that. Anyway guys, I'm gonna wrap up this video. I hope you're having a great weekend and thank you so much for making it to the end. And if you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.